In the 1890s, stonemason Charles Tenner had a plan for his family. He worked in the quarry. We did most of the work in the quarry down here. That's why he bought Tenner Hill for 50 cents a day. See, see. Uh -huh. And he bought 10 lots in here so each child could have a lot, you know. Every house was tennis. I can remember when people raised chickens, had gardens. And we was a big family. Most, most all of them were dead. Only four or five of us left now. And all our uncles and aunts, and mothers and fathers, and a lot of others. But there were other names too, like Bryce, Bird, Honesty, Lee. They were farmers, business people, craftsmen, and landowners in Falls Church, Virginia. They wanted to be a part of America. And coming from nothing, working hard, and attaining uh, a piece of land to call their own was very important to them. Frederick Forrest Foote, Jr. was a merchant. He was elected to the town council in 1880. Harriet Bryce, a former slave, was a major property owner. She and her husband, George, donated land for the building of Galloway Church. George Thomas had a shoe shop at South Washington and Broad Street for 57 years. In 1913, two young school teachers, E.B. Henderson and his wife, Mary Ellen Merriweather Henderson, built their own home. Their neighbor, Joseph Tenner, continued in the family trade of stone masonry. My Uncle Joe, well, he was a self-taught man. He had his own books, he taught himself. He would, uh, well, oh, he would make speeches anywhere, you know. He could go in, in the Washington and, and argue with any of them senators in there. E.B. Henderson taught in Washington, D.C. and took the trolley to work. There were two waiting rooms at the East Falls Church Station, one for whites, which was heated in the winter and clean, and one for blacks, which was cold and often filled with baggage and livestock. There was such a debra I mean, debasing situation, and uh, he, he really resented it, of course, but he had to tolerate it. In 1912, the Virginia legislature authorized cities and towns to adopt segregation ordinances. By 1915, members of the Falls Church Town Council proposed an ordinance that would confine black residents to a small section of town. Families faced losing their land and homes. Segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. This was segregation, and whites wanted it their way. I know my grandfather had just built this house in 1913. So he would have had to give up this house. He would have had to uh, sell it or otherwise get rid of it and move someplace else. Um, I think that would have happened to the same, uh, the same thing would have happened to the tenors. And um, I think rather than take it, they decided to fight. And he met with uh, uh, the tenors and others uh, and decided that something should be done about this. Something was done. The Colored Citizens Protective League was formed. Eventually, this organization was chartered as the first rural branch of the NAACP. Joseph Tenner was the first president and E.B. Henderson was the secretary. The NAACP engaged lawyers to prevent the enforcement of the segregation ordinance. The first rural branch had won its first battle. They were very thorough. They were very respectful in their cause, but they were very serious in their commitment to standing up to what was about to be imposed on them. I'm sure that this example is the kind of example that would lend not only historical, but eminence to groups doing this, not just here in Virginia and the United States, but wherever there are groups that are being so debased as blacks were in those days. 
E.B. and Mary Ellen Henderson spent the rest of their lives as educators. Mrs. Henderson was the principal of James Lee Elementary School and was active in membership recruitment for the NAACP. My, my mother uh, won the award for having the greatest number of initiates, uh, memberships in the NAACP and the whole the whole branch, the whole organization. Not only that, but she had the total respect of the community. So if she was canvassing a community, she was going to get the membership because the community respected her. Respected her because she was the principal of the Falls Church Colored School, uh, known at that time as the Falls Church Colored School. I think it was later called the James Lee Elementary School. The Hendersons lived in their Falls Church home for 50 years. Today, Tenor Hill is no longer a quiet rural neighborhood. The Henderson home still stands. Joseph Tenor's home is gone. At the foot of the hill is a new home, the home of George Tenor Jr. and his wife Velma. We're just proud to be able to move back onto Tenor Hill and to build a house in the same uh, location that George actually grew up in. Just to be able to, to be there for him is, is a joy for me. That was the end card right there. I bought that out there. So it's, kind of, it's sort of like uh, uh, doing what they did for me when I was a kid. They looked out at, they looked out at for me when I was a kid. Now I'm looking out after them now that they're older. You old folks? I declare. You all old folks. The Tenor Hill Heritage Foundation was formed to remember those who came before us people who raised families, who contributed to the building of community, and were pioneers in the civil rights movement. There are plans to create a monument as a lasting tribute. The monument will be made with stone taken long ago from the quarry on Tenor Hill. When I hear his name, Joseph Tenor, and, uh, and I hear Ed, Ed Henderson, I, I think, man, these guys are warriors. You know, back there they faced all of the uh, uh, the hate and and uh, the, a lot of adversity that they had to go through. If they hadn't stood up, where would we be now? What would have happened down the road if someone hadn't said, no, not this time? You don't want to forget. I think it's wonderful that you could remember. The Bill Knight Monument here, it should remind them of the struggle that people did to make it, make it uh, so they can live better today than they did when I come along. I think it is important that that history exists. I think it's, and the monument helps as a visual reminder that something significant happened here and it is something that should not be forgotten. It means everything to me. Everything to me. Yeah. Yeah. Or to have somebody to come along and say, we did this and we did that, and you could, the used to couldn't do this and do that here. And it shows that the things that to me that the people have done before my time, that will be recognized by, the old, by, by my children and the children after them. Uh, it means that uh, uh, I can sit down and enjoy some of the stories and, 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 and feel sad and feel happy when I hear those stories. And uh, when my kids get older, I can pass those stories on to them.